All right, welcome to the demonstration of the method of markers. The method of markers is what's known as a fair division method. And it was actually discovered or described in 1975 by William Lucas, so it's a relatively new idea. With any fair division problem, the goal is for the players, these are the people who are receiving portions of the, of the uh, entire um, collection of objects, the object is for each of those players to receive what they feel is a fair share. So when I divide up this candy, whoever the players are, each of them should walk away with what they think is their fair share given the number of players who are involved. Now notice, just as it's lined up, that's what we have to do to start the method of markers, is line up the objects in an array. This line of objects is one group. Notice that we haven't used any markers, and that's, what we, that's why it's called the method of markers. We haven't used any markers to divide it up. So no markers would leave it in one group. If I were to take a pencil, for example, and place it between two pieces of candy, that one pencil would divide it into two groups. Okay? So when the players are making their decisions about what they think is an equal portion, they're going to place markers down. In our example, we're going to use four players, Four players, we only need three markers to divide it into those four groups. Now you might think with 14 pieces of candy and four players, it's impossible to divide it equally. But if you think about the preferences, notice these aren't all the same type of candy. Maybe a particular player likes Snickers a whole bunch. And so they would think that that's a little bit more important to get. And so they might include a few fewer pieces of candy with a Snickers bar. As with any fair division problem, we want to make our selections privately. So suppose the first person privately thinks uh, that if I divide these 14 pieces of candy up, that maybe these first three pieces of candy constitute one-fourth of the value of these 14 pieces total. So they would place a marker between the third and the fourth piece. Okay. Then they decide that um, the next four pieces constitutes, excuse me, we have to put the two down there, constitute another portion that represents a fair share. And then they decide that the next four pieces is the third group, therefore those last three pieces are a fourth group that are roughly equal in value to the remaining three groups. Okay? So if you look at this from the orange player's perspective, these three, these four, these four collectively, and these three all represent a fair share to that particular player. So in the end, if they walk away with one of those groups of candy, they're going to be happy. That would be called a fair division. Now remember, this is done privately, so the orange player does all that without other players seeing what he or she is doing, and without that player seeing what other players are doing. So now suppose the pink player comes along, and the pink player also values those first three pieces of candy, the same way um, the first player did, the orange player. And then, well, let's see here. The pink player does it again, thinks that those are equal in value. And then finally the two differ in their thoughts, and the pink player thinks that the next three pieces are just as valuable as these four pieces, and the four pieces that are after the third marker are equal in value to the other groups that the, he or she has created. Notice that I've numbered the markers. That's very important. Um, we keep the markers of one player separate from the markers of another. So what would take place is each player would make their private selections, then they would make them all public so that they could do the division. So without getting too much into the gory details, the green player comes along, values the first four pieces, the same as he or she values uh, the next four pieces. It's a little bit different there. And then the value is the same for the next three pieces. They divide those remaining uh, six pieces into two equal piles. And finally, player number yellow, or play, the yellow player comes along and places that one there places their second marker with the other two two markers and places their last marker right there with the pink player. Okay. 
So again, keep in mind that when the players are done, if they get any group of candy that they've deemed equal in value to the other groups of candy, they will be happy. This is very important in the end because there might be a moment when we think it's not fair. So here's how we begin the process. Once all the markers, or once all the options have been selected and the markers have been displayed, we scan from left to right and we look for the first marker numbered one. Well, notice that there are two of them. So we have to have a tiebreaker. And so we get to one and two, they flip a coin, heads we get, um, orange takes it, tails the pink takes it, and let's suppose that it comes up tails. So pink is going to take these three pieces of candy. Now pink is happy because pink thinks that these three pieces of candy are worth roughly one fourth the value of all 14 pieces of candy. So because the pink player has already made his or her selection, we're going to take the, take the pink player's markers away. We'll leave all the other markers there uh, for now. Now we've done one search, and the first search consisted of looking for markers numbered one. Now we look for markers numbered two. And this is kind of a funny thing, but what we do is we look for the markers numbered two, and the first two that we come across are actually these two twos. So once again, we have to make some sort of random decision as to who gets it. We flip a coin and suppose it's yellow who wins the coin toss this time. What pieces of candy does yellow get? At this moment, we're only going to give yellow what he or she thought was a fair share. So they thought that between markers one and two was a fair share of the candy. And so they get all of the pieces of candy just between those two markers. So that starburst that's sitting there over there, all lonesome, is not distributing yet. We'll get to that in a moment. Okay, so the yellow player gets those. So we've scanned once, we found the markers number one. We scanned twice, we found marker number two. Now we scan a third time, we look for marker number three. And once again, we have a tie, that's okay. We flip a coin again to see who gets it. And this time, green wins again. Or not again, they haven't won the, at all. Uh, but the green wins. And so green is going to get all of the pieces of candy from their third marker back to their second marker. So these three pieces of candy. And again, we have an undistributed piece of candy. Okay. So green gets those three pieces of candy. I'll just leave them up there for green. All right, so poor, the poor orange player has no candy whatsoever to, uh, to make him or her happy. But what we do at this point, when it's the last player, you look for their last marker, they get all of the candy to the right of that marker. So orange is going to get those three pieces of candy. Now, whoever is officiating this distribution, I think, should be the one who gets those two pieces of candy. But to make our players as happy as possible, we randomly let them select, um, randomly distribute these last two pieces of candy to the four players. Obviously we can't split them in half, although this does come with two starbursts, but we won't talk about how we would split the blow pop. What we'll do is we'll just take a, a die, a four-sided die, and say who gets it. Um, suppose we roll it the first time, and the orange player, or the yellow player, is the one who wins the roll of the die. Well, the yellow player gets to make a choice, they choose the starburst. The next time, the orange player gets it and chooses that. Now, at this point, you might think it's not fair to the pink and green players because they didn't get any extra candy. But remember the rules at the beginning. The rules at the beginning stated that if a particular player, if each player received the candy between two of their markers, that was considered a fair share. So the pink player and the green player did get their fair share. Yes, the other two got more than that, but we're did not violate the original rule of everyone receiving a fair share.